Since wars were good for the rent troop business, Prince William used his royal connections in Denmark and England to provoke these wars. King George III of England rented Hessian soldiers from Mayor Rothschild and Prince William to fight the American colonists. American colonists had already shot down millions of North American Indians whose spears and arrows were helpless against the deadly gunfire. The worst Holocaust in human history occurred not in Nazi Germany, but on American soil. By 1776, British and Hessian troops arrived on American shores ready to fight the American colonists. Preparing for an attack. And we won't have long to wait either. See there? Hessian troops to the north. Hessian mercenaries. I can't believe the king is paying Germans to come here and kill British colonists. won their independence and Mayor Rothschild won his blood money for the heads of each and every Hessian soldier killed on the battlefield. Back in Europe, Napoleon, with his mighty French army, became master of Europe. When Napoleon and his troops stormed into Frankfurt, Germany, William feared for his life and his vast fortune. He left $3 million in the hands of Mayor Rothschild to pay the Hessian soldiers. Then he escaped to Denmark to stay with his royal relatives, all of whom were descendants of the tribe of Dan. Mayor Rothschild received a stock market tip from his World Revolutionary Network. Instead of paying the Hessian soldiers with the three million dollars that was left to him by William, he bet the money on his insider stock market tip. With his new fortune, Mayor Rothschild set up five family banks to be run by each of his five sons in London, Paris, Naples, Frankfurt and Vienna. On September 19, 1812, Mayor Rothschild died at the age of 68. He left instructions that the amount of the inheritance must never be made public, that secrecy and ruthlessness must be used in all business practices, and that family members must intermarry with their own blood relatives to keep the family fortune all in the family. All five brothers dedicated themselves to their ancestors' world revolutionary dream. That dream was to control the entire world under one world ruler by disarming the nations of the world. A king, the son of David, will purify Jerusalem from the nations that trample her down, destroy the lawless nations and gather a holy people whom he will lead in righteousness. Mayor Rothschild's most successful sons were Nathan, who ran the London Bank, and James, who ran the Paris Bank. Together, they changed the face of history and became known throughout Europe as the Demon Brothers. Their father had given them a detailed New World Order plan for world control. Adam Weishaupt wrote and completed the plan on May 1, 1776, with Rothschild financing. It was a futuristic plan that would put New World Order members over the next centuries into political power positions. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. It was a plan to divide and conquer the nations of the world by provoking wars, then profiting from war loans and from the sale of weapons to both sides. Exhausted by war, terror, and chaos, 
humanity would eventually bow down to one world ruler and one world army as a solution. It was a plan to control public opinion by purchasing the controlling shares in TV networks, newspapers, publishing houses, and film studios. Briefings and updates from Washington and around the world every 15 minutes throughout the business day. As influential leaders, global markets, and your money takes center stage. On CNBC. Sports, games, and alcohol would be used to distract the masses. Laws would be changed, banks would be monopolized, and people and nations would be made into obedient debt slaves. With Rothschild financing, Adam Weishaupt formed a secret world revolutionary group called the Illuminati. He recruited thousands of influential members by convincing them that only men of superior ability have the right to rule over the ignorant masses. French police exposed the plan when they found documents on an Illuminati courier who was struck by lightning while traveling from Germany to France. The Illuminati was forced underground. They took refuge in the lodges of a secret brotherhood called the Freemasons who practiced death and rebirth rituals and whose history dates back to the construction of Solomon's Temple. Nathan and James Rothschild came up with a scheme that would put the Illuminati plan for world control into action. It would also make them filthy rich. The brothers helped finance both sides of Napoleon's famous Battle of Waterloo between the French and the English. With advanced knowledge of the British victory, Nathan Rothschild spread lies that the British had been defeated, which caused a stock market crash. While panicked English investors sold their life savings, Nathan bought up their market shares for pennies on the dollar. When official news of the British victory over Napoleon was announced, the English stock market skyrocketed and so did Nathan's wealth. In one foul swoop, the Demon Brothers had double-crossed the English masses and taken control of the Bank of England. Flaunting their stupendous wealth, the brothers went on a lavish spending spree. They bought mansions, fashionable clothes, and hosted extravagant parties. By 1818, they had picked the pockets of French investors by crashing the French government bond market. According to plan, the brothers formed the world's first international bank and named it N.M. Rothschild and Sons. The Pope became their most famous customer. The Catholic Church, which had financed the wholesale slaughter, torture, and looting of hundreds of thousands of Muslims during the Christian Crusades, were now doing business with the Demon Brothers. By 1823, the Rothschilds were guardians of the entire papal treasure and took over the financial operations of the Catholic Church. Enraged citizens accused the Rothschilds of conspiring to control the world's money markets. Fearing for their lives, the Rothschilds retreated into the shadows and cast their eyes on the youthful United States of America. To avoid publicity, the Rothschilds made themselves invisible by creating and hiding behind two front companies, J.P. Morgan and Kuhn and & Loeb. 
More and more power was becoming concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. By 1906, J.P. Morgan's bank controlled one-third of America's railways and almost 70% of the steel industry. He eventually had a stake in the major companies of the 20th century, among them AT&T, ITT, General Electric, General Motors, and DuPont. At one point, Morgan made the off-handed comment, America is good enough for me. And the newspaper of William Jennings Bryan retorted, whenever you're tired of it, you can give it back. I mean, that was the image of J.P. Morgan, the owner of the United States. The success of Morgan's industrials was quickly reflected in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The Rothschilds bought controlling interest in England's British East India Shipping Company and the illegal opium trade with China. They offered junior partnerships to New England's leading American families.